This is a WSKY USB-C rechargeable flashlight. I was sent this flashlight to review for free. Um, it would normally cost $50. They have not paid me for my review, and so my opinion remains my own. All right, so in the packaging, you get a user manual. It says model number SD190. You have a USB-A to C charging cable and the flashlight itself in bubble wrap. And so this is a relatively long and relatively heavy flashlight. It says it has a 10 amp hour battery. Um, it has a extending and retracting head here so you can do wide angle and zoom. It has a button, has four lights, and on the back here there's a little rubber plug that has the USB-C charging port. There's also at the end a wrist lanyard like this with a little um, removable clip here. Now I'm pushing the button and from the factory none of the lights are lighting up and nothing's happening. So I'm going to have to read the manual to see if there's something I have to do to turn it on and maybe plug in a battery or if I just need to charge it up. So I could not get the flashlight to turn on, and the manual doesn't say anything specifically about this. Um, so, you know, I didn't know if there was anything special I'm supposed to be doing. So I unscrewed the rear battery compartment, and it's basically, you know, a spring mounted back here, and it has a user replaceable battery. Now this is a set of two 26650 cells, and the user manual says that they're in parallel, so they're not in series. Um, and so essentially it's still a 3.7 volt battery, so it's not a set of series cells, but it's basically doubling the capacity. So it is a 10 amp hour or 10,000 milliamp hour is what it says right here. It says 37 watt hours capacity. Um, what I found is that there's like a little kind of a cardboard sticker over the bottom here, which is not conductive. And looking at it, there's a spring on the front, which is supposed to hook to here, and a spring on the back, which is supposed to make a connection there, but it's pretty obvious why the flashlight won't turn on is there's still this sticker over the back of the battery. And I don't know if that is something put on there to keep it from discharging while they're shipping, um, but there's nothing in the manual that says remove this sticker, but I am removing the sticker and I'm going to check the voltage after removing the sticker here because the sticker is non-conductive. But we have 3.9 volts after removing the sticker. So this is not a series set of cells. It's in parallel. I can see a little connection wire here and a little connection wire in here that are putting these guys in parallel. So if you're replacing these batteries, you can't just throw two uh, 26650 cells in. You need to get a set that's in parallel. But it is user replaceable, so these batteries are somewhat user replaceable. Now also, um, this thing claims to be IPX6 waterproof, and there is a little rubber gasket here, like an O-ring going around it. So once I get this guy screwed on, it should do a pretty good job of keeping water out of the inside there. Now, I just noticed when I was screwing it in, that O-ring popped up out of its groove, and so... I need to be sure when I screw this in not to pop the O-ring out of the groove if at all possible. All right, so I am squeezing the O-ring and it's squeezing out. It's really not supposed to go there. So mechanicals on that O-ring, not great. It was okay when I took it off, so that might be our me for taking this thing off, but I can't get it back in the way it was supposed to be. All right, I was able to get the O-ring in successfully, but it was a bit of an effort. What I had to do was screw this up to the O-ring and then tighten it up halfway, you know, half a turn, move my fingernail all the way around to kind of push the O-ring into the gap, and then turn a little more and push my fingernail in. So I got the O-ring stuffed in the gap, but I think that O-ring is a little loose in that gap, or the gap isn't quite big enough, because I really had to, you know, go around poking it back in, turning a half a turn, poking it back in, and so forth. I did get it in again though. Okay, so now we have a battery that's connected and it is turning on now. So we have one, two, three. All right, let's try modes again. We have high, low, strobe, and off. 
So the manual said there were multiple modes. It said there was a high, medium, low, strobe, and SOS. Um, I'm not getting that. I'm just getting kind of a high, a very low, and then a strobe, and then I turn it off. Now, if you're in high mode and you press and hold, it'll turn off immediately. If I press and hold, it'll turn on. But yeah, I'm only getting three modes on this guy. So there is focused into a zoom. There's wide. Um, the listing set 120 degrees. It looks more like 90 to me, but there might be some light on the outside I'm not really seeing here. We'll have to take it out at night and really play with that. Now I do have here only two lights are lit up. So I had a high surface voltage, it was like 3.9 volts on that initially, but that might just be a surface voltage because it hadn't been under load. So this guy, you know, from the factory might only be halfway charged. Um, and I am going to plug it in with the USB port and charge it all the way up. Okay, it charges, it draws one amp at five volts. It did do USB-C power delivery negotiation correctly. So any USB-C charger will charge this guy up. Um, I've seen it, it had two dots when I had the flashlight on. Now when it's charging, it has three solid dots and one flashing dot. So from the factory, it looks like it came with 50 to 80% charged. All right, this guy here is fully charged, drawing zero amps. And so we put in seven watt hours to bring it up to fully charged status. All right, we're going to try this flashlight at night. So that is high. That is medium. That is flashy strobe. So there's high beam. We're going to go to zoomed in. So that's high beam zoomed in. My camera does not see very well at all at night, so with your human eyes you could see better than the camera is showing. But this gives you an idea. This is the widest beam here. I would call that 90 degrees more than 120 degrees. So this is the low setting, and it's plenty good to walk around with. It's actually a little brighter than you really need for walking around. Um, this is at the beam all the way out, the widest. So, you know, it, it's definitely, you have to kind of direct it a little bit. I zoom in, it goes like this. So there's bright, there's the dock out there. Have the shed here very close. Um, going across the lake, I can highlight grasses in the lake, not really seeing return coming back from the far side of the lake. So there's the lime tree making the beam, beam bigger. So here's view of the trees. I'll make the beam narrower and you'll really start to see the trees up there. There's bigger. Okay, it is 6.03 p.m. I've turned on the flashlight at the high power setting. Have the time lapse camera watching it. We're going to see how long it goes. This guy's been running for an hour. We're down to two out of the four lights. It's just barely warm down at this end. The end up here, it is warm. Um, it's not hot, it's just warm. Now this end goes in and out for focusing, and the LED is actually touching this metal in here more than that metal. Um, and that's just a little bit warmer. It is not at all uncomfortably warm. Um, you know, so this definitely has enough heat dissipation, enough efficiency that it's not like getting really, really hot. Um, just in, in general use, it's, it's iron, you know, at the highest power level for an hour here. So it, it's doing, you know, just fine from a heat standpoint. Um, you know, there's, you know, it, it's not even as warm as a hand warmer. You can definitely tell there's a little bit of heat coming out of it, but it is not bad at all. I wouldn't have any problems carrying this around in the summertime.
All right, it's 845. This flashlight is down to a single dot. Um, it's still putting out light. It's definitely not as bright as it was before. So I'll have to look at the time-lapse camera to figure out exactly when it went from bright to kind of dimish. We're going to let it run a little longer just to see what happens. All right, it's 10.05 p.m. We're down to a single light here. and This guy is kind of pitifully poor dim, so I'm going to call it there, and we're going to charge it back up and see how much power it takes to charge this guy all the way back up. All right, this guy charged up overnight, and once it gets charging, it does this flashy thing where it basically flashes the LED just very briefly. Um, I'm not sure if that's just like a, hey, I'm charged, come and get me, or, or what that is about, but it does that. Um, this guy here took 25 watt hours to fully recharge, so that's basically 5 amp hours at 5 volts, but it was 25 watt hours. Now, I believe this guy has a battery that claims to be 37 watt hours, so 25 watt hours is significantly less than that. And this is the second time I've recharged this guy. The first time was 26 watt hours, this time was 25 watt hours. So pretty consistently it looks like, you know, if you run this flashlight down till it's quite dim and then charge it back up, it only takes about 25, 26 watt hours to charge it back up. So I'm going to say that's kind of the usable capacity where we're getting out of that battery. So this two cell flashlight is one pound, 1.3 ounces. So that's 17.32 ounces just under half a kilogram. All right, so lengthwise, fully compressed, this is just a little over nine and a half inches long. If you do the zoom there, it's gonna get up to about 10 and a half inches. All right, so in evaluating this flashlight, back of my head, I'm always comparing it to this flashlight, which is one I've previously evaluated. Um, they look similar. You can see kind of the button stylings are similar. They have the four LEDs. This guy here, acts as a USB power bank, so it has USB-C charging and USB-A out, whereas this guy doesn't have that feature. It has just the USB-C charging. USB-C port on this guy will do um, power delivery negotiation and charging. This guy over here needs a dumb cable, so it needs a USB-A to C cable. It does not negotiate power delivery charging. Um, so this guy has a single 26650 cell. This guy has two 26650 cells. Um, as far as I can tell, the LED inside of these guys are basically the same. Um, this guy here has a slightly narrower focus when it's fully zoomed and slightly narrower when it's fully wide. So if you're looking to do a wide area, this guy might go up to full 120, maybe it's closer to 110. This guy here is, you know, probably more 90 degrees. Um, now when you zoom in, this guy here doesn't zoom quite as much as that guy. So this guy zooms just a little bit better. But brightness level of the LEDs are basically the same. The only real difference here is the extra battery. So this guy has about twice as much runtime as you'd expect. Um, you know, it, it, they're different stylings. They might not be made in the same factory, but they might be using the same components. So for example, these guys here look exactly the same. Uh, maybe they are made by the same factory, just different styles. But these flashlights are essentially equivalent in light production output. It's just that this guy will go for twice as long as this guy. It's also longer and heavier, um, which in most cases is not a benefit unless you need the extra runtime. Um, although if you're trying to use this as a club, it would be more effective than that guy. Um, so I'm going to put up a little video comparing the two of these at night and you'll see you know beam wise strength wise this guy zooms in a little more but the brightness level is basically the same for these two flashlights all right i'm going to be comparing the two cell flashlight against my one cell flashlight so this is the two cell flashlight at its brightest setting and the narrowest beam This is the one cell flashlight at its brightest setting and narrowest beam. So if we compare the two here, the one cell flashlight does not get as narrow as the two cell. So the one cell there is a larger beam even when it's zoomed in as most. The two cell can get to a narrower beam. Lighting wise though, they look relatively similar 
This one's slightly brighter, but only because it's zoomed in more. I'm going to zoom it out so that they are of comparable size. So now, I guess the two cell is just slightly brighter, but not a whole bunch. So let's make these to the widest setting. All right, this is the one cell flashlight. And this is the two cell flashlight. One cell, two cell. So I'm going to say that the two cell is just slightly brighter. But that might be because the field of view is slightly smaller. So I'm going to take the one cell. Okay, I've adjusted the one cell so it's the same field of view as the two cell flashlight. So there's the one cell flashlight. There's the two cell flashlight. From what I'm seeing, I think they're using the same LED in these two flashlights. Um, so I think realistically, the main difference here is the slightly more zoom. So if I zoom this guy, that's two cell zoomed. This is one cell fully zoomed. So you can see that the two cell zooms tighter than this guy. Now this guy zooms a slightly wider so the two cell does not zoom quite as wide as the one cell one does. And I should point out that this flashlight impresses people with its brightness. So, you know, the brightness is not an issue. These flashlights are both plenty bright for just about any type of flashlight use I would ever use. Now this guy here has all the modes. It has a high, it has a medium, it has a low, plus it has the flash, and it has the SOS strobe mode. So the manual for this guy talked about all those modes, but it really only has high, low, and a, str a strobe mode. And those are the only three modes this guy has. So there is a, a mode difference here. Um, realistically, I think high and low and, and strobe are basically all you really need. And I'm not even sure you need the strobe. And because these are lithium ion batteries, it's a lumen flashlight, it's not super heavy. I mean, it's bigger than, you know, a single cell flashlight, but it's not super, super heavy, but it does have, you know, it does have some heft and it has some size on it.